Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I want you to know that as a child of God, um, whatever level of success you have right now, it's far from where God wants you to be. Why? Romans chapter 11. Let me show you something here. Book of Romans chapter 11. Something that will help you know that is yet so much land to be possessed in Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans 11, verse 33. Um, this is Paul the Apostle um, discovering certain levels and depths of, in God. And then he, it was beyond his mind. And then the man, he just, he just exclaimed in, in that overwhelming awesomeness of God he found. And he says here, oh, verse 33, oh, the depth of the riches. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out beyond comprehension. Who can fathom it? So God said to Joshua, don't rest on your hour yet. Don't think you've arrived yet because there's so much I have in store. Look at the apostles. You know, the Bible tells us the apostles began to, to, to perform miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. Until one day, they arrived at the level where Peter's shadow began to cast out devils and heal the sick. That was another level. They brought the sick to Peter and they got healed. They ministered to them, then they got healed. Peter raised doctors, but he got to be why it was not the shadow of Peter. Do you know what it means for a man's shadow to be anointed of God's spirit? Peter's shadow was anointed of God. He got to be where in, in, in life of the Bible says God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul until handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from his, oh my goodness, were taken from Paul's body, carried to the sick, to nations, to states where they were sick when the handkerchiefs got to them and demons cried out. That was a level. And then he tells us in Proverbs 4, he says the path of the just is as the shining light. Is as the shining light. Listen, if you are relaxed in your pursuit of glory, it's because you're unaware, uninformed of what it means to have the glory of God in your life. If you are relaxed in your pursuit of becoming a better child of God, it's because you're ignorant of, of, of the meaning of life in Christ. You're ignorant of it. You don't know the meaning of life in Christ. Life in Christ is a call to exhibit the supernatural. And if you are still living in the natural realm of things, then you are ignorant of what it means to be a child of God. There is the natural life. You are not born again to continue living the natural life. There is the natural life. If that was all, all, the, all there is to live for, and if that was all man was glad to live for, Jesus would not have come. There is the natural life. Understand that there is the supernatural life. The supernatural life, oh my goodness, is the, oh boy, I hope you want to hear this. The supernatural life in the plan of God ought to be the everyday experience of the new creation. You need to know that. Ought to be the everyday experience of the new creation, of a child of God, the supernatural life. What will bring, what we attract the natural man to the child of God if we are having the same experience? That's the reason why men are not interested in Christianity. Because our experiences are the same. We go through what they go through. We fall to what they fall to. How then, you see, your light starts to shine when you begin to exhibit the supernatural. As it works. There is this supernatural life. It is above the natural. Beyond the natural. That is called supernatural. Beyond the natural. It's superior to... Listen, the supernatural is a superior life to the natural life. It doesn't have to be a life of white garment. 
Okay, because that's many of that's the 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 the, the, the picture many of us have of spiritual life. You have it, it has to be a life of cloud, life of smoke. No, it's not a life of Indian hemp. What, what do you, we don't need smoke. That's not what it is natural. It has to be smoky. Then you see a cloud. It's not a call to be a weird person. Weirdness is not supernatural. That's not what I'm talking about. It, it, it is a performance that calls attention to God. Do you understand that? That's spiritual life. A, a, a performance that calls attention to God. Where they say people, people are, are trying to survive and you are just heaping up success. How are you doing it? How are you doing it? There's so much about the supernatural that we will need time and growth to explain. Time and growth, not just time. But even if you have all the time and you don't have the growth, you will not understand it. Like Paul had all the time to, to work for the Corinthians to grow. There was time. And by the time he came to talk to them of higher things, they were not ready. So they needed growth also, not just time only. So we need time and growth to explain supernatural to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So there's so much about that that I will leave for, the, for time to talk to you on. So it's a supernatural life. And we must desire it. You see, um, becoming who God has programmed us to be begins with a desire. You must desire to be it. It's not just no, you can know something and not desire it. It's not enough to know that it's a supernatural life. Do you desire it? I think it's, it's a, a, a missing requirement. That we must start to emphasize. People know of the glory of God. Do you desire the glory of God? Jesus said, what is what you desire? You see that? It begins with a desire. Do you desire it? I can tell you why we are, we are having this word for the mouth. Some days ago, just while we're having the program, I said, Lord, after this program, what next? I want some, I said, Lord, I want some changes. I want some new things. I want some, I want a new level of results. I want some, I want different things. I'm telling you. You know, prior to that time, I already knew November was a month of, of, of uprightness. But then I said, Lord, I told you that at the campground. I already knew it was uprightness. But I said, Lord, um, after the program, what will be next? I, I desire some new levels of, of results. I, I desire some new things, Lord. I, I, want to, I want some of your honor in my life and in the ministry. I, I, want some of, I, want, I want another level of your glory, Lord. I want something bigger than just the regular program as end there. We're basking in the of the program and all that. And I want some things right at the, at the campground, right, right during the program. I, I asked the Lord for that. I desired it. I said, I want something better than it's always been. Because there's more in you. And so after the program, I got back to my base. And I was going into the bathroom to use the mirror. And I saw written, great glory. Before that time, by the best, I first saw it. I first saw it in a vision. And then I saw the Hebrew, the Hebrew number. I got to the bathroom and I saw it again. I said, Lord, what are you telling me? And right before, right immediately after that, I saw Jezri. And I said, what are you saying? He said, for I will sow the good that nation to myself. I will sow the nation to myself and the people to myself. Because Jezri means, it means to be, to be scattered and sown. I, I will explain that. In it means to be, to, be, to, be, to be scattered and to be sown. Scattered of God and sown of God. You will understand it if you, if you have the, 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 the hunger for it. What justice is about. So God was saying, I will take away the dross from the silver. That I may own the silver for myself. I will take away the shaft so I can own the wheat. 
Oh boy. Let me tell you what this is about, really. If, if you can take note of it, you will get it better. It is Jezri uprightness, great glory. Okay? It is Jezri, J-E-Z-R-O-E-L. It is Jezri uprightness, great glory. So let me explain the progression to you. Jezri means... To be scattered of God so as to sow to himself. All right? To be scattered of God so as to sow to himself. You get that? Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Okay? Sow to himself. I'll, I'll read that to you briefly. Okay? He sows to himself. He sows the, the people to himself. Right? Then... In the process, oh boy, they become, through purging, the upright ones. They become, through purging, the upright ones. Who are qualified to inherit great glory. Let me just explain it without having to go through the Bible for now, okay? Um, the, the understanding comes from Hosea. When God said the prophet Hosea, go marry um, a woman of Hordom. The Bible tells us Juma conceived and gave birth to his son. And God said to Hosea, Hosea called his name Jezuri. And so, uh, it says, therefore, I will, I will deal with the sins of the people. And afterward, I will bring them back to myself. And when I bring them back to myself, I will hear their heaven. It's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful story if you have the time. Book of Hosea chapter 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hosea chapter 1, we'll read uh, through the, the entire chapter. The word of the Lord that came to, unto Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzzah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Please, when you hear the names of these people, he's telling you the, the, the period of his prophecy. Okay, Hosea prophesied in the time of King Uzziah, King Jotham, King Ahaz, and King Hezekiah. So he was a prophet for a very long time. That's what he's telling you. Okay. Word of the Lord that came unto Uzziah, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosiah. And the Lord said to Hosiah, Go, take unto thee a wife of Hordoms, and children of Hordoms. For the land had committed great Hordom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Goma, the daughter of Deblame, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezuri. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived the Gabe daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no, no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy. Upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, nor by horses, nor by horsemen. Now, when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bare his son. Then said God, Call his name Lo Amin, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Yet the number of the of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured, not numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, watch it carefully now, understand the story. It shall come to pass. In the place where, yeah, okay, look at it. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Watch it now. Watch it now. Then shall the, the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. 
first of all, he's going to scatter Israel. Now they shall be gathered together, watch it, and appoint themselves and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Verse chapter 2. Okay. Say ye unto your brethren, and me. Remember it was Loami, you're not my people. And to your sisters, Ruhama. Plead with your mother, plead, plead, for she is not my wife. Neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her hordoms out of her sight, and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and set her in the day that she was born, and make her as a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and slay her with thirst. And I will not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of her dumbs. For their mother had played the harlot, she had conceived them, she had conceived them, okay? She that, she that conceived them had done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers that give me bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her path. And she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. For then was it better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for bar. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and my wine in the season thereof and will recover my wool and my flowers given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and no one shall deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause her, cause her, her mirth to cease her feast days, her new moons, and her Sabbath, and all her solemn feast. And I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, whereof she had said, These are my rewards that my lovers had given me. And I will make them a forest, and the beasts of the field shall eat them. And I will visit upon her the days of Belim, wherein she burned incense to them, and she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and she went after her lovers and forgot me, said the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will allow her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her, and I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Arco for a day of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be at that day, said the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi, and shall not call me no more Bali, for I will take away the names of Belim out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowl of heaven and with the creepy things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Watch this carefully. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, now this is sowing to himself. God is sowing to himself. Watch it. And I will betroth thee unto me Okay, and I'll betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I'll betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will, in that day, I will hear, said the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me. Have you seen that? The same people he had scattered. He said, now we sow her unto me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. Now, what is God telling us here? He's simply showing us a purging process to produce an ideal people. Did you get that? A purging process to produce an ideal people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I will sow her unto me in the earth. Jezreel. But first, I will scatter her abroad. Then I will sow her to myself. That means when you have gone through the, the purging process, I will bring you back to myself. In righteousness, in holiness, you'll be my people. Oh, hallelujah, glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, boy. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Remember this. This is beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. When you read the words of the prophet Jeremiah, it tells us when Israel came out of Egypt, Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and then Israel sinned against our God and became a corrupted nation. And God said, I will port Israel. I want to share something beautiful again. Something very interesting in this study. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I wasn't expecting us to go through all this today, you know. Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Now remember, in Jeremiah, it said, when Israel came out of Egypt, Israel was holiness unto the Lord. But then the nation corrupted herself in idolatrous ways, you know, and many other things. Now, in the final analysis of their existence, before the coming, um, when, when, when Israel will be ready for the final redemption as a nation, because the Bible tells us in one day, God will redeem Israel to himself. So let's look at some things. Zechariah chapter 13 quickly. Verse 1. In that day, talk about the day of the Lord, there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land and they shall no more be remembered. And also, I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Did you see that now? This is when God is ready to sow Egypt, Israel back to himself. I will pour them and sow them to myself. To be a nation of holiness. It tells us that there, no, there will be no more Canaanite in the land of Israel. Hallelujah, glory. So, um, I want to believe you understand the whole concept of Jezuri, uprightness, great glory. If it's not clear to you, let me just make it clear to you a bit. Oh boy, book of Isaiah 28. It is the Lord who will take care of the impurities to sow the best seed to himself. Separating the impurities in our lives, right? In this very contest now. Separating the impurities in our lives to get the best of us. So that we can attain to uprightness that is required for the great glory. It's, it's supposed to be a straightforward thing if you, will, if you are willing to understand the scriptures. You have to know there are things that hinder the glory of God. All right? There are things that hinder the glory of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, before I read Isaiah 23, 20, uh, 20, uh, book of Isaiah 20, 28 to you, let me show you something in Hosea, a little progression in what I'm talking about. Go to Hosea 11 and 12 and 13. So what we'll do, we'll read um, just verse 1, verse 1, verse 1 of the three of them, and you get a picture, right? Glory to God. Hosea chapter 11. Book of Hosea chapter 11. There's something about this book today. Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. Are you there? Look at it, verse 1, just verse 1. We'll move to chapter 12 after that. When Israel was a child, then I loved him. You seeing that? And, and called my son out of Egypt. Is that clear? When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Beautiful scripture, right? Chapter 12. All right, chapter 12 quickly. Verse 1 of chapter 12. Ephraim feedeth on wind. 
okay? In his growing process, there was now a deviation from the child I love. Are you getting it now? From the child I love, who I'm, for, the, for the child I have set a, a, a set goal for. I want them to become my, you know, he said, um, you alone have I known, right? Of all the nations of the earth, I have chosen to be unto me a peculiar treasure. But they fade, like, like Paul tells of all have seen and come short of the glory of God. So is they came short of God's expectation for them. So watch something carefully. Ephraim filled on wind and followed after the east wind. He daily increased their lies and desolation. And they do make a coming out with the Assyrians and oil is carried into Egypt. You see their error? So from a love child to becoming a man who is increasing lies and desolation. This is what we have in Christianity. You come to Christ, you love God. You want to go to our every meeting. You want to serve the Lord. And then we, in the presence of time, we got, because of the cares of life, suddenly you start compromising your language. Suddenly you start giving it to something you ought not to give up. Remember, the way we come into Christ is how God expects us to attain to his glory. But many times we start coming short of the glory. The more we stay in Christ, the more we should. You know, you understand the picture I'm painting to you. We start coming short every day. Oh, it tells you that um, the, the kingdom of uh, the kingdom of God, like a sower who sows seed, it said and those that fell by the way are those who hear the word of God and we're glad that they receive it. But through the cares of life, the word is choked. And so suddenly, that holiness we came into, that holy life that, that, that we're brought into, suddenly we start losing our, our holy living. It says perfectly holy in the fear of the law. We start losing that, that consecrated life. We're brought in holy. He said, you are, you are a holy vessel to God. But suddenly, holy vessel start becoming a corrupted vessel in the process of time. Why? Because of the cares of life, the temptations of life. Are you getting the picture I'm painting to you? When this is set into your life, you don't attain to the glory. So what does God do? He purges us. He takes away the things that stand in the way of the glory so that he can sow us back to himself the way he saved us. Do you understand that now? This is the concept of Jezuri. Oh, you are stirring my spirit to talk about something I didn't want to talk about. You look at the story I read to you in, in Hosea chapter 1. God said, pick a, a woman of whoredom. Is that how, is that how we were saved? We were, he said, you that were dead in trespasses. We were dead in our trespasses. He said, "Ye that were dead in trespasses, has he quickened together with him? So he said, we died in our sins. We are brought back to life in Christ Jesus to become holy people. Is that correct? Beautiful. And suddenly, Goma is saying, my comfort came from my lovers. Isn't that how we say we are better off in the world? I'm better off an unbeliever than a Christian. Suddenly, the things that we're saved from become our temptation. Goma, the wife of Hosea, was saved from her dome, and suddenly she didn't know her increase was the result of coming to the prophet. She told it to us from her lover. So he said, I want to seek after them. Is that not what we'll do? Suddenly, we want to get a business school that we tell a lie. A small lie. And then one day we'll tell a big lie. You want to pass an exam. When you got born again, you will not even ask questions in the exam hall. And then the longer you become a Christian, the more it became comfortable to ask questions in the exam hall, to cheat. You get that now? And you understand this. When we were saved, there was a set target. To attain to the glory. So the way we came in, if we continue that way, we'll get there. But the, 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 the faith of life, the temptations of life, start to corrupt their holiness that we're brought into. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Start to corrupt it. And suddenly, you no longer, find, you no longer feel bad when you tell a lie. The first time you told a lie as a Christian, you felt bad. The first time you sin, you felt bad because now you're born again. You are pure. You are holy. You see, it tells us, um, it says, for such as some of you, but now you are sanctified. So you feel good. And then in the process of time, you tell that lie again. You don't feel bad about it. Gradually, you are deviated from that holy child that got caught out of Egypt. Do you understand the picture? And listen, the worse you become, the more impossible to attain to the glory it becomes. Is that clear? Are you getting the picture about, of Jezreel at all? The concept of Jezreel. This is the picture I'm going to paint to you. Oh, she got the Masatigayeto. You got born again. You wanted to speak in tongues forever. But now, 10 minutes to some is not like a whole year. What happened to you? So, he, he look at it again. When he said was a child, then I loved him. Watch something carefully. I loved, remember, you have to understand this. 
Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I give you praise. Watch it. When Esau was a child, I loved him. I went to Egypt and said to Pharaoh, let my son go. And when Esau came out of Egypt, what was Esau called? Holiness unto the Lord. When we come to Christ, we are called holiness unto the Lord. What did he say to Moses? If you will keep with the instructions, you will be unto me a peculiar treasure. Do we always keep the instructions in Christ? We don't do it. But watch something. Because I was trying to explain. I didn't want to teach at the beginning. I wanted to just tell you what the month close and end the meeting. But the Holy Ghost is going to communicate something to my mind right now. That if, we don't, if I don't explain this message to you, you will not see come, you will not see attain to great glory. Remember this. In our walk with God, the scripture says, God desires truth in the inner man. I'm going to read that to you. He desires truth in the inward part. I read that to you. Because many times we wonder why the things we read in the Bible are not happening in our lives. Don't you understand that there are things that inhibit the glory? There are things that 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 that, that keep the glory from manifesting. Don't you understand that? The greatest hindrance to the glory of God is, un is unconfessed sins. Unconfessed sins. It is living in the flesh. The glory of, of, of the Lord is in our death. You have to be dead to experience the glory of God. And that was illustrated in the tabernacle structure. When you come to the altar of sacrifice, where you die. And then you come to the breast, by bronze laver, where you washed and cleansed with the word. Then you come to the holy place, where you have the table of incense, the showbread, the, the candlestick, where you attend to the fullness of the Spirit of God. And the glory is not there. The glory is in the most holy place where you have the cherubim of gold, where you have the ark of the tabernacle. That's where the glory of God is. And what is in that ark? The table of covenant. What does that mean? Hebrews 10, I will write my law in their hearts and in their minds. Don't you understand? Where the word of God becomes what you live by. That's where the glory is. You, you have to hear this, everybody. The glory of God in a more literal sense has to do with the manifestation of his character and riches in your life. Because many times, cloud will not allow us to understand the glory. The glory of God has to do with the manifestation of his character and riches in your life. The glory of God has to do with the reflection of God's excellence in your life. Because glory is the, is the very nature of a thing. The essence of a thing. How much of the God essence is manifested in your everyday life? The glory of God is, in the, in, I told you, I said in, 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 a, in a typical sense of the glory, it has to do with the, 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 the manifestation of the weight of God's presence that you carry everywhere you go. Listen, the presence of God in our lives is called the superior presence. That was the presence, oh, hashige mandi gross. That was the presence Samuel carried so much so that when Saul came to arrest David, oh, he's your irtocracy. You, you read about the superior presence ever? I had planned to talk to you about um, the superior presence at the camp meeting, but I couldn't. I just couldn't talk to you on that. 
The superior presence was what Jesus manifested in the garden when they came to arrest Jesus. They came to arrest Jesus and Jesus stopped the praying. He went to the soldiers and said, whom do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. And they fell under the power. He said, get up. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Imagine Asas is coming to your house. And he said, who are you? He said, we're looking for you. He said, I am he. And then before you, they fall. He said, get up, get up, get up. Let me encourage your arrest. And then he asked them a second time, whom do you seek? We haven't, we haven't seen this happen. I haven't seen the glory of God. He said, whom do you seek? Second time, he said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I said, I am me. And they fell again. He said, get up. Take me and let these ones go. Jesus couldn't be arrested. He gave up himself. He said, take me and let these ones go. That it may be fulfilled. This God that says, take the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. See a man fulfilling scripture by himself. And then he said to Pilate, you couldn't have power over me. Just you said, I would have killed him. If I wanted to, I would have killed him. He said, this is the honor I received my father to lay down my life and to pick it up. No man can take it from me. There is that. Listen, when you start to walk in the glory of God, you know your life is in your hand. No money can take it from you. He said, this is the honor I have of my father to lay down my life and to pick it up. No man can take it from me. God wants us to walk at that level where no man, no death can take your life until you say, I'm giving up the ghost. It's time to leave. It's a level of the glory of God. Where are you in your Christianity? A greater number are still living in the fear of death. He said, please don't kill me. Don't kill me. If you're walking the glory of God, you don't speak like that. Nobody can kill the, you can't kill the glory of God. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, glory of God. Did you not read when the glory of God showed up in the days of Solomon, the priest could not minister? Listen, in the presence of the glory of God, everything that's not supernatural is neutralized. In the presence of the glory of God, everything that is not supernatural is neutralized. Do you know what the presence of God is? In the presence of the glory of God, poverty is neutralized. Cancer is neutralized. Man, everything dies. Neutralized. Everything. Oh, boy. I, you, I'm turning in my spirit. I want to go in this direction today. I want to just come and get the word for the mother and close. You, you haven't, we haven't heard that. We, you see... As much as it's not happening in your life, it is because we've come short of it. And now it is God's strategy to pour just on the things that came out of the glory. That's the concept of Jezreel. When he says to scatter to sow, it, it doesn't always have to mean send to other nations to suffer. No. Many times, haven't you seen where you have to break up the fallow ground or break up the outer shell to bring out the seed to sow it. Haven't you seen that? You break up the outer stuff. It says the seed I'm sowing, not the shell. You take out the shell, bring out the seed and sow it. That's, that's another meaning of Jezreel. To break, to rip, to... You see, that's why I told you about God purging the nation, purging the ministry, purging us. God is taking away from us do you understand that now? The outward things, listen carefully, uprightness is an inward life that is exhibited on the outside. So God takes away the outward one. You can take up the inward one to attain to the glory of God. Uprightness is an inward life that's expressed on the outside. I want you to wake up in your spiritual life. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So sin is a deterrent to the glory of God. Do 
you know the glory of God? I'll read that in a moment, but let's, I don't want to have a number of Bible portions that I, I, I called and I did read for you, okay? Back to Hebrew, um, Hosea 12, and then we're going to read 12 and 13 quickly. Let's, let's get this done so I can move to the glory of God for you. Let me show you something to, to make you want to desire it, to give a desire, because I, I said it begins with a desire. It begins with a desire. Um, Hosea chapter 12, quickly. Have you found it? Verse 1. Ephraim, remember we read chapter 11 already, okay? I was a child, I loved him and I called him out of Egypt. But chapter 12, verse 1. Ephraim feeded on wind and followed after the east wind. He daily increased lies and desolation. And they do make a covenant with the Assyrians and all is carried into Egypt. Have you seen that? Chapter 13. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Haya baba baba bokush. Oh Rashi man grace to la bash kala party sisa. Hallelujah glory. Oh hallelujah glory. Kapa tele masisi cobra ishka. Thank you Lord Jesus. Chapter 13, verse 1. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when, he, when, but when he offended Nibar, he died. Did you see that? Chapter 13, book of Hosea, verse 1. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended Nibar, he died. Do you understand that at all? Hallelujah. Mm. If you didn't get it, let me read it to you because it's almost very clear in the, in the King James. But let me read to you from the NCV. Look at what it says. It says, people used to fear the tribe of Ephraim. Are you getting it now? They were important people in Israel. But they sinned by worshiping Baal, so they must die. That's what King James is saying, just that. It's another sense. You know, it's just to be very powerful. But by your sin, you have died. Hey, when we came into Christ, what were we called? A royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people. But why we know? It says we were called to manifest all of the excellencies of God. Why are we far away from manifesting the excellencies of God? Sin is a reproach to any people, but righteousness exalts a nation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So when he showed me Jezreel, he was telling me, I'll be taking away the things that hinder the glory. For I desire truth in the inward part. That means I desire uprightness. Uprightness is a requirement for great glory. So I will take care of the, of the limitations in your life that, so that you, you have the, 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 the freedom to walk in uprightness for great glory. Because you may, you may desire to please God. It tells us there are things that set us, that, that, that easily beset us. We had a God visit at the campground. A rain came. It came so mightily. To, to, and it seemed like it was a disruptive rain. But by the Spirit of God, we found out that there were there were ancestral situations. There were things that we could not in any way have come out of. Those were the things God came to take away. Because remember, he says that we open a fountain for sin and for uncleanness. So one of the ways God cleanses the people is by his reign. When God needed to clear the air, the earth of the sins in the days of Noah, what did God send? He sent the rain. Rain is God's means of purging. 
is symbolic of a purging process. People don't know these things. God purges a land through rain or fire. Through rain or fire. In the days of Noah, it was with the rain. It says, in the last day, I will use fire. So the rain that came to us was a visit to take away things that were beyond their capacity because there are things that are beyond people. People don't know that. that thing. It says, did you not read the Bible? It says, the Lord ransomed Jacob and redeemed from the hand of it that was stronger than he. There are things that you may never know exist in your life and are the reasons why you're not making progress. You do all you know to do and things are not happening. You start to wonder why. Because there are things that you don't even know about and are just in your life. And so we had a God visit. You, 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 didn't, you didn't expect that coming to have just been an ordinary meeting. No, we had a God visit. And then he says, now I desire uprightness for the great glory. And to be upright is easy. I can teach you that. But I couldn't teach you what I didn't know existed in your life. How could I have taught you about something that I, I'm not even aware of in your life? Think about that. I mean, you are a shepherd of the people. And look, oh, glory to God. Joshua was the captain of Israel. But he didn't know that there was an abomination in their midst. So he couldn't give them victory. It took God to say to Joshua, you are experiencing defeat because there's an abomination in your midst. It took God to remove the abomination in their midst. The sin of Achan. So you can be a pastor who loves your people and you're preaching and teaching and praying for them and they're not making much progress until you get frustrated. But see, in the good of the nation, God wouldn't let me get frustrated. So he comes to us and says, okay, you know what? I'll come to remove the things in their life you don't even know about. Because after the program, suddenly things started coming to light that we never known about. That's God's purging process. I have said it. The purging is not aimed at taking you away from the nation. It's aimed at taking away the things in your life that make you ineffective. It's only when you refuse to give them up that God takes you out. Are you getting it? So when you hear purging, it should bring fear to you. It should bring confidence if you are really a sincere child of God who wants to be better at you. Because purging is not meant to be a God-destructive way in our lives. It's supposed to be a God-healing a God healing way, a God-cleansing a God way. Every purge is not to destroy you. No. Oh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh boy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you still here? There's so much about this truth we have to understand today. Can I read something a little more to you in Hosea 13? Quickly, let's, let's get down a bit. The same chapter we're reading. Let me just show you something quickly. Hiya, ba, 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 ya. Quickly. <laughs> oh, it's a month of great glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Increase in God's essence. Increase in the riches of God. Increase in the weight of his presence. We'll get there in a moment. Increase in the weight of his presence. Increase. You know, I didn't know this was going to be the word for the month. I was hungry for that superior presence. I just talked about it and I didn't teach it. I just know in me there was a hunger for a superior presence. If it's a, if it's a your divine presence, there should be something superior about the presence. I just, want, I just had a desire for it. But let's see something. Let's, let's, get it. let's get this through so we can move to that superior presence. Oh boy, thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. From a song again. When Ephraim spoke trembling, he has not himself in Israel, but when he offended in Bar, he died. Follow me quickly. And now they sing more and more. Does this not describe our journey in Christ to you? Does not this, no, come on. This is what I see. And now they sing more and more. And I've made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding. All of it, the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. Therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that passes away, as the chaff that is driven with the wild wind out of the floor and as the smoke out of the chimney. Yet, I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt and thou shalt 
No, no God but me. For there is no Savior beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pastors, so were they feed. They were feed and their hearts was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Hello, people. Listen carefully. When you look at verse 6, it says, According to their pastor, so were they feed. They were feed and their heart was exalted. Therefore, have they forgotten me. You know what this is about? This is Jeshurun. Jeshurun means the upright one. Jeshurun means the upright one who was great and kicked against his, his savior. Did you, you have to understand the story of our lives in this month of November. Because when you read in Deuteronomy, which I'll show you in a moment, God said, um, Jeshurun was fat and kicked and forgot the rock of his salvation. What is Jeshurun? The upright one. What is our moth? Is our moth of great glory, right? What is coming of great glory? Uprightness. What, how shall we attain to uprightness? Jezuri. Jezuri. I will remove the stuff in your life, sow you to myself, put a desire for upright in your heart, you shall be upright, and then you attain to great glory. Because the, the, more, the more you delay in attain to my glory, the more you delay my plan for the nation. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, glory. Hallelujah, glory. Come on, hallelujah, glory. Woo, we give you praise. We give you praise. Glory to God. You see, we're going to learn this truth for meetings to come. Meetings to come. I'm going to learn this truth until every part of us is permeated of this truth. We're going to learn it. Hallelujah. And now, quickly, I want to take your offering for this service. Go ahead right now. Just take your offering for this service. And um, if you're in, uh, in, in, in any of our real chapters, as the ushers are passing the offering bags, just go ahead and give your offerings right now. And if you're watching, participating, um, uh, online, just go ahead. The, the, the details are on your screen. Go ahead and, and give your offering quickly. May the hand of the Lord rest upon all you. Give and prosper you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to mean this prayer. Just say with me right now. Oh Lord God. I believe all of the claims of your word. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus Christ was offered for my offenses. He died and was raised again to life for my justification. Today, I declare Jesus Christ is Lord and I ask for the remission of sins of my soul I ask for eternal life for my spirit and by faith in you and in your word I receive the remission for all my sins I receive eternal life for my spirit I declare this day I am born again. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I declare God as my Father. Father God, I thank you. And I ask you to come place your seal of ownership over me. I ask for the Holy Spirit of promise. And in Jesus' name, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Thank you, my Father. Today, I become a citizen of heaven and a member of the family of God. Father, come take your place in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, I just want you to, to, to open up yourself right now. 
for the Holy Spirit to do a work in your life. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. For the rest of you in the meet, I want you to join me to speak in other tongues for 60 seconds for those that have just received the Holy Spirit. And those that have just received the Holy Spirit right now, open your mouth and pray because you have just been baptized of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray right now. Shalamangredisto jele paridiga soja lege brondo sevra ika Go ahead. Come and take your place, O Lord. Hey, la go say, the rest of us speak in other tongues. Come and take your place, O Lord. In my life, come and take glory to God, your place. Yes, Lord. In my life, come and take your place. The amount of meditation you give to the world to that degree shall virtue be death back to you. By the Spirit of God, I'm beginning to see that or realize now that there's the need to give ourselves to the, not just to um, to truth to come, but the present truth. Like Peter said, he said, I'm writing to you. Even though you know them, I'm already established in the present truth, I'm still writing to you. So if I'm established in the present truth, why are you writing back to me? Why are you reminding me of it? So that I can give myself wholly to it. Paul said, Timothy, till I come, give yourself to doctrine. Give yourself to exhortation. Give yourself to the mercy. Give yourself to all I have told you. He said, give yourself wholly to these things. Give yourself wholly to these things. Meditate upon them. Meditate until your profiting. Who? Who? Glory. Until your profiting appear to all. There is what we must make known to others. There is what people must see from our lives. The glory must arise. But for that to happen, we must plunge ourselves into the truth which God has given to us. He says, give yourself wholly to these things. Not partially, not occasionally. Give yourself wholly to them that your profit may appear to us. Plunge ourselves. He says, give hope. Oh what he's telling us is this. If you will give yourself wholly to the truth, you are only going to return with the testimony. He says, give yourself wholly to these things that your profit may appear to all. Because the more you meditate, that truth that God has impacted you with dunamis, the more you think it, the more you are challenged, the more you are stirred up, because as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So as you meditate that I have been given the spirit of dunamis, suddenly on your inside, you are stirred to burst in tongues. He says, stir up. We don't only step to speaking in tongues. We can step through meditation. You can stop a gift through meditation. Not only just by praying to you can so ponder, ponder, ponder until you are child on your inside. Then I've got dynamics on my inside. And then to begin to speak in tongues, it starts to flow.